Hi, I'm Samantha Turner and I'm a junior at Seven Academy High School. In this video, I will be going over how mathematics apply to forensics. There are several ways to use math to solve a case. Crime scene investigators are those who specifically go to the scene of the crime and figure out what happened and where it happened. In this video, I will show you how crime scene investigators use trigonometry to figure out the area of origin for bloodstains. You will need a ruler, a pen or pencil, painting supplies, paint, and a clean, safe environment to perform this activity in. A calculator is also optional. Before we begin, you need to know that there are two main categories of bloodstains. The first category is passive patterns, which is basically a bloodstain that occurs without any external force. For example, there are many different kinds of patterns, such as contact or transfer patterns, drip patterns, or flow patterns. The second category is spatter. Spatter occurs when um, an external force comes in contact with an open blood source, um, which, for example, in a real world situation, uh, would occur when a bullet passes through someone's shoulder, there would be spatter coming out the back and spatter coming out the front from the point of contact. How the math applies to the analyzation of blood stains occurs when the blood spatter um, originates from a location away from the surface of the blood stains, um, which is called the area of origin. To find the area of origin, crime investigators must first find the area of convergence. The, the area of convergence is a two-dimensional area on a surface, where one draws a line through the long axis of several stains to create an area in the center where the general location of the spatter came from. Your first step is to pick several elliptical stains, or ones that are long and oval, and draw lines to their axis using their tails as a guideline. You want to do this through multiple stains to get as accurate as you can. Crime scene investigators don't always use this method of analysis. It's used to figure out where the spatter came from, and is most commonly used with spatters like this, where there are several different elliptical and circular shapes. You want to measure the length and width of a stain. You want to be as accurate as possible, so measure with the nearest millimeter with your ruler. Of course, there are better tools like a digital calibrator to get better results, but I'm using something more available to everyone. Now, divide the width by the length. Then, you take the arc sign of that number, and that gets you your angle of impact. The last step is to find the area of origin by using sine, cosine, and tangent. Measure the length of one line from the stain to the area of convergence. This will be your adjacent line. We know that the origin is 90 degrees above the area of convergence. The path the drop takes is the hypotenuse. Now, we apply Sokotoa. Take the tan of the angle of impact and multiply it by the adjacent line. This figures out the length of the opposite side, or where the area of origin is. Crime scene investigators repeat this process with multiple lines to be as accurate as possible, and at this point will attach string across the hypotenuse of the lines in accordance with their angle of impact. This is so they can get a general idea of the area of origin. During the activity, we were able to find the area of origin for blood splatter by using trigonometry. However, this method is not always used by crime scene investigators. It depends on the circumstances of the crime and what kind of crime it is. In forensics, everything needs to be as precise as possible. This activity I performed was not completely accurate since I did not use more advanced tools. By using what I would have, I was able to create an activity that everyone can try at home and see how math is applicable to the real world. I feel like, especially when you're in high school, that it can be hard to understand that math is used in everyday situations. Throughout our education, we're taught that math is sitting in a classroom and turning assignments on time, but it's so much more than that. This activity that I performed allows students to visually and physically see how mathematics benefit the world for the better. Without math, we wouldn't be able to solve a crime or provide evidence for a case, or right or wrong. I encourage others to do hands-on math themselves and try this activity at home during quarantine. It can help prepare students for real-life events in the future, like solving crime. I'd like to thank those who helped me make this video and to thank the judges and um, those watching and taking the time to watch. <laughs> thank you.